All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and then it is posted to our website later for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access our archives. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share um, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, we do quite a uh, variety of things here, as I said. Our um, the Nebraska for those of you not in Nebraska or those who don't know, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that is for all libraries. So um, public, academic, K twelve, um, colleges, universities, uh, correction facilities, museums that have libraries, anything that's a library, we serve. Uh, so on our show, we'll have anything that's library related. So it could be libraries doing something cool, uh, sharing services and products, demoing um, uh, resources, so doing little mini training sessions, uh, book review sessions we do here for kids and teens and adults, book groups. Um, we're all across the board. So if you do look at our archives and our upcoming shows, you'll see it's everywhere and in it's everywhere, <laughs> but libraries you see are the main focus. <clears throat> uh, we do have um, do some shows with the Nebraska Library Commission staff. <coughs> excuse me, um, for things that we are offering here, <coughs> or things we are promoting through the Library Commission. But we also bring in guest speakers, as we have this morning. Um, with me today is Joyce Stevenson. Good morning. Joyce. Good morning. <laughs> and she is from Crete, uh, Nebraska, which is just west. Southwest, southwest ish of of Lincoln, where where we are right now, <laughs> and Creek Public Library, <clears throat> and um, she's going to talk to us about their new library, which is currently being built. Correct. Right. We're yeah. We'll get into that. I'm sure. Yeah. What the statuses of that? Um, this is actually a session that was submitted to um, here also to the Nebraska Library Commission. In front of you, who might be interested in small and rural libraries, we do an annual online full full day online conference. Um, called Big Talk from Small Libraries. And uh, Joyce submitted this to our Big Talk from Small Libraries uh, show, or conference, but uh, we always get too many submissions. <laughs> we have like 12 spots open 12, uh, for the whole day, and I got like 37 submissions. So there's way too many to fill. Well, and I think and 10 minutes would have been pretty tough. Yeah, and it was also, yeah, she did also submit it for one of her lightning rounds, a shorter one. And yeah. I said, you know, mm -hmm. I think you can do more than 10 minutes. And I've, I've run out of room in the one day, so she, and if you, if you watch our show regularly, you'll see many of them um, since February when we have that conference um, are, they didn't fit in that one day. And I'm not expanding one big talk to more than one day. That's a long day of, of broadcasting. But Encompass Live is a perfect um, place for some of these Let's ones to go. Sure. Yeah. So she's going to tell us about um, how they did their library design in Crete. So I'll just hand over to you. To By using away. research. Yeah. Um, Don't go into it willy nilly. <laughs> Good <laughs> morning. <laughs> um, I've only been at Crete for a little over two years. And actually, the day I was hired uh, was the day we received the submissions from three architects. Oh, wow. I remember it was the big pile. So that's where I came into the scene. From right into the deep end to start. <laughs> right into the deep end. So the first question, obviously, was which which architect to to choose. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very very strange background. Um, I am from Nebraska, but I have a, an undergrad in marketing um, from Colorado State. So that's, I'm that's I'm the big marketer, mm -hmm. and I have always believed in the importance of research. So. Um, I have had a lot of experience in research, but apply, in this case, I was applying it for um, library design as well as the other parts of issues that you have with a new library. Mm -hmm. um, Marketing is a big thing that libraries do. Um, we're inconsistent, I think, is in, in marketing ourselves. So I think having that kind of background is probably really, really good for yeah, a library director. It was. Yeah. I, yeah, marketing and communications. I have another uh, master's degree in international marketing, and I just completed my MLS from um, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Nice. So um, I did leave, live overseas for 27 years in Singapore and South Africa, and then came back to uh, America, to Nebraska in particular, 
um, always wanted to be a small town uh, library director and was very fortunate. Um, and not only that, but fortunate and somewhat daunting to realize um, I was building a new library. Yeah. And um, so even though my perspective in my talk today will be about building a brand new public library, um, I believe what I have to say is somewhat universal. Some of the research um, tips and Absolutely. activities I went through is applicable for other types of libraries, and it's also applicable for if you're doing a renovation and not necessarily um, um, building a brand new building. It doesn't have to be a, from scratch necessarily. No, and and I mean, we librarians are wonderful at listening to others, and we are also very wonderful at helping out each other. And I have to give a shout out to all the librarians who I have contacted over the years. Um, and I so appreciate and know I will be, con actually I, ha I am still contacting some of them as we speak. Um, there was a self tax increase that was passed in Crete that uh, two thirds of it went for building a new library. Nice. So out of that, um, we are getting 4.2 million. Um, we were able to get just over 2 million in um, foundation mm -hmm. and the rest from corporate and individuals. And we are fully funded and it is uh, 7.4 million. Nice. Um, so, the, so the citizens obviously were supportive of getting a new library. They were. Yeah. They were. Um, I'll get into a little bit more of the library itself, but um, briefly, um, wish this is what I would like to um, discuss today. Um, so I will first start with secondary research, uh, spend more time on primary research, and at the very end, um, talk a little bit about fundraising. Um, this is the floor plan. It has changed slightly since this was drawn, but essentially it's, it's, it's what it is. Um, it's a 20,000 square foot building out of which 15,000 square feet is the library and 5,000 square feet, which is in the top right there, is the community room slash storm shelter. You can see that the walls are thicker. Yeah. Um, it can hold over 450 people wow. in, in a tornado or whatnot. Um, the mm -hmm. construction is uh, 14 months, and knock on wood, we will be opening um, the 2nd of January, 2020. Oh, wow. And we oh, are on schedule. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so, okay. Um, we've been very fortunate with the architects and the um, certainly the construction company has mm -hmm. been wonderful. The It is a whole city block. Mm -hmm. um, you On the top left-hand corner is what we call the library park. Oh, nice. um, we will have a story Green walk. Space. Oh, cool. I love those. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have a really fun story walk, a couple of playgrounds. And what's really great about this is that the city owned a third of a block just to the right of this that is a parking lot and will continue to be a parking lot. So we were able to really utilize the whole city block without taking much up from, mm -hmm. from parking. The parking will be a 90 so stall. Parking available for people still will still be available for people coming to the library. There's a little bit of parking around the 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 park um, parallel mm -hmm. um, parallel parking, but the the majority of the parking will be on the right. So mm -hmm. we didn't have to cut into our space for for that. Um, was there what was it on this block where the library was going before? Was it, there something else? Yeah, it was a hospital. Ah, okay. And that's and the hospital took up that whole block, and that's why they had the adjacent adjacent parking. Sure. Um, but what we are doing different than what the hospital did is we're actually stopping. Um, so there's no thoroughfare in between the parking lot and uh, the building, okay. so nobody will get run over. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that that is that's the change from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, just thought I'd show you some some photos. These are panorama photos I've taken from the exact same spot. Um, what I find amazing about these two photos is that in the middle of February in eastern Nebraska, we had a huge snowstorm, yeah. and they were still able to get this They're done. They're still working, still advancing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You always think in the winter is when it all shuts down, but sometimes nope. you can't. No. Nope. They had to. And this one I just took the other day. It's little yeah, <coughs> the walls, walls are getting in there. The glass <laughs> is going in right now, so it should be enclosed um, pretty soon. Um, for my secondary research, I looked at um, two books in particular, which I'll go into some detail, um, articles, and I also use the ALA website. Mm -hmm. um, the secondary research, I feel very 
strongly really needs to be done prior to doing any primary research. And mm -hmm. the reason why is, is that for my primary research, I visited libraries and I didn't want to waste their time by asking questions that really I should you have known. You could have been able to find out yourself. Right. Sure, sure. So to better utilize my time with the libraries, I undertook the secondary research first. Um, there were two books in particular. This one, um, the Countdown book, is a very general um, book. I ordered these, both of these books from the ALA. Um, ALA. Um, this Countdown to a New Library is, is, you can read by the table of contents. It certainly is applicable for a renovation as well as um, a brand new building. The checklist book I found to be amazing, and that's exactly what it is, is just pages and pages and pages of checklists. Now, probably it's a little bit more skewed toward um, a brand new building, but certainly would be relevant for a renovation as well. Um, this was published in 2016, so it's fairly up to date. Um, it is broken into various sections. Um, there'll be a section, for example, on architect selection, and then there's that whole checklist you can go to, um, to exterior design. Um, and here is a page here on the right of uh, what you should be looking for on exterior design considerations. So what I would do is I would take a, you know, wherever we were, you know, getting toward the um, design phase, where we were in the divine design phase, I would take a look at this checklist and I would look very carefully, what have we discussed, what, what's a questionable um, and what's not applicable. And some of these things, you coming in kind of in the middle, you said the architect designs are already on your desk. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. We were choosing the architect. Choosing, oh, okay. So they hadn't submitted designs yet, just oh, deciding no. who to go with. Right. Ah, okay. So the okay. first round of, of research that I did had to deal with um, the three architects who submitted. Mm -hmm. So okay. I found out where they had built, mm -hmm. and then I physically went. Oh, to see their previous love building? Well, just to see how, how they got along with the architects. Mm -hmm. I went sure. to Love Library at UNL. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Beatrice had used two out of the three. Mm -hmm. And just basically said, how are they to work with? Do they listen to you? Right. So that was the first round. So, um, yes. So what I would do with this checklist is I would go through a section. And based on this particular section, these are the questions I came up with. Mm -hmm. that I would send to the architects. Now, they would reply in writing, and I was told over and over again the importance of getting everything in writing. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I did. there's a few things that I wish now I had in writing that <laughs> I didn't, so it's a good goal. Um, for example, if you look at like question 19, these are things you don't think about. What mm -hmm. happens if somebody likes something and stick, oh, stick it into it your down drop, the book trap. Book oh, drop. Yeah. You know, is it fireproof in there? And if it's and if it that room starts on fire, what the what, consequences what of that? So you can kind of take these questions and they can lead to other questions mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I this is what I did numerous times um, relying on that checklist book. Um, the other things I looked at was um, looking for articles. I was still getting my MLS at the time, mm -hmm. so I was able to search the databases um, for that. And the ALA also in September, in their issue, in mm -hmm. September issue, they have they their the architectural library. Yeah, they do. Awards. Yes, they um, do. And that I, I found, and I went back and I looked at um, previous year's issues mm -hmm. as well. So that was, that was something good to look for, and also can be a reference for who to contact mm -hmm. um, for primary research as well. Um, next is that I talk about the primary research, which is by far the bulk of my research. I just want to jump in here too. Well, for those of you here in Nebraska, um, I looked up both of these books that you mentioned, and here at the Library Commission, we have a professional collection yeah. of books to loan out, and we have both of those books. I know. Collection. That you got them from us? Or no, I, oh, I okay. borrowed them from you, and then I purchased them. Ah, okay. So yeah, yeah I did that. Uh, the checklist one apparently had a previous version from 2009, but we have the 2016 one as well. Yeah. The newest version that, yeah. that is updated. Yeah, but both of those. So if anyone in Nebraska is interested in um, looking into those, you can borrow them from here at the Library Commission. Yeah. And that's what I did before I purchased them. I mean, they're not that terribly expensive, but I just thought I would, would get a look would, at them first. Get a look at them mm -hmm. first before you decide to buy. So, going into my primary research, um, 
which by far is the bulk of my research. I started right away. So I started the um, end of April 2017, and in our summer reading program, um, in our kickoff, so just a few months later, mm -hmm. I in the in the kickoff in the park, we I put out this board and I asked the kids, just draw what you want in in the new library. There you go. So there is a picture of a of a girl <laughs> and there's and there's a close up of, of a drawing which was pretty detailed actually. Yeah. And and you you know it it's interesting to hear what the kids have to say. Sleeping zone I can see there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also these kind of things also help just generate interest. Mm -hmm. and hopefully that the community feels a part of the design phase as well. And that is so important in, gaining, in, it, in it. Yes, yeah. gaining acceptance. Um, and then we held three um, community meetings. And here's uh, the invite for the first one. Um, the first one really was the, probably the most critical one. Mm -hmm. um, it was before the architects had done any design. So it was a total blank slate. And so what they did is they filmed it. And then they also had a whole list of, of comments, what people would make. And then you can, you know, there, here's a, here's a, mm -hmm. a word cloud. Um, yep. So the second meeting was then held after the initial drawings were developed. And then the, the third one was when things were pretty final. Mm -hmm. um, and we probably had about 30 to 40 people attend, and they were very um, vocal in what mm -hmm. they wanted. And, and uh, it, the vast majority of them, of course, you can imagine, are, are yeah. avid um, patrons. Sure, the regular, the super users. <laughs> and then the last one, we also had an opportunity to talk about the library park, to bring in the outside. What do we want? Um, what does the community want for that park? Um, and then on our website, I also just had a link just a you know a question one question and that was what do you want in the new library mm -hmm. so that was always live um, for months there um, I spent a lot of time <laughs> visiting libraries sure. I personally have never had any direct experience in building a new library mm -hmm. so very few of us do although I have to say I did meet one or two librarians that this was their second project they had done two oh, wow. two so Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, new libraries aren't that common, um, and so um, I just picked the brains of everybody who I thought. Um, now, the first question you have to ask is, where do you go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the commission and most states have the surveys mm -hmm. that that is put out. Um, Public library survey that we have, libraries do every year. Yep. Right. And there is a question in there about that, yeah. Yes, there's a question that says, is there a construction project currently underway? And it's a yes, no. Mm -hmm. And if it's a yes, then the next question is a projected com completion date. So, mm -hmm. and then the other thing that was, uh, another question that I used quite a lot was the current year that the library was built. How old is your current building? Yeah. Right. So I was trying to visit libraries that were built in the last five years because technologically things have yeah. changed. Oh, absolutely. So I was trying Wait, to focus so on, fast it changes. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to focus on a five year window. Um, and so I could go back with that last question, the current year that the library was built. Um, and I was trying to focus a little bit more on libraries that were built brand new from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And that's what you were doing. Very yeah. few. But I did visit yeah. quite a few that were renovations. Mm -hmm. But and and everywhere I went, I learned something. And most of it I learned what to do, but I also learned what not to do, mm -hmm. which is equally valuable. Absolutely. Um, now, how old was your your um, previous or whatever? I guess your so we, ha library. we have a Carnegie. We okay, built in 1914. Carnegie, right? yep. And then we have a 1984 extension. Okay. Um, but when they built the 84 extension, they didn't fill the basement. Oh. So I always kind of tell people, you know what, if they had put that basement in, mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't be building a new library. We could do. probably just be okay with that. Yeah. Um, but we are packed to the gills, yeah. as a lot of libraries are. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So the libraries I visited in Nebraska are what is here. Um, the very first one I visited was Blair. And they were um, fairly recent, also brand new. 
Um, Ashlyn also fit that bill as well. Um, and in particular, I went to these libraries first because not only we're similar um, service size, we currently, our population technically is 7,000, mm -hmm. although we know that's undercounted, um, sure. of people who actually use. But that's no, that's a population of Crete. Ah, oh, okay. So, but my service population is closer to ten, because we include the whole county. Sure. Because you don't, it, it's free for anybody in the county. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to visit these newer ones that were started from the scratch because I was at the same time setting up a fundraising committee, mm -hmm. and I wanted to pick their brains in particular as to Nebraska foundations that we could contact for grants. Right. So. Um, that's why I focused on, on those two first. Um, then I went and I looked at Kansas, Iowa, and Illinois. Um, but every state survey is different. Yes. They don't ask the same questions. There are some standard ones that are required to be submitted nationally, but then um, we have a lot of leeway, which does make it difficult to compare across right. states. So Iowa, if I remember things. correctly, yeah. didn't have those questions. Yeah. Are you building a new library? So I just picked up the phone and called the Iowa Commission mm -hmm. and said, hey, can you tell me what libraries are you know, newly mm -hmm. built? So that was how I found out what was happening in, in Iowa. Um, these are where I visited outside of um, Nebraska. It looks like a lot, um, and it is quite a bit. But I, I have to say, I did not make a trip specifically to visit these libraries. Hmm. Okay, I was, I'm sure people were wondering, how did you, how did, how did they swing that? that? Yeah, right. <laughs> so I actually I was going there already for something else. Exactly, and my boss was very, um, he realized the importance, who's, my boss is the city administrator, he realized the importance of doing research and talking to, to other libraries. So, for example, you see the three out in um, western Chicago, which is Aurora, Aurora North, and Batavia. Mm -hmm. and, the first Thanksgiving I was there, I was going to spend Thanksgiving with my son and my um, sister-in-law, sister-in-law and brother-in-law in, in Batavia, and I found out that um, Aurora had a brand new library. Mm -hmm. So I arranged to visit. Um, so, mm -hmm. and then on the way back, I stopped at Cedar Rapids, which mm -hmm. had a brand new, brand new downtown library because they got wiped out in the flood. Right. They got like 40 million in FEMA because mm -hmm. they lost everything. Every, everything was destroyed. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what it cost um, my uh, me and the boss in in the city was basically two nights in a hotel, mm -hmm. one going over and one coming back. Right. Um, I didn't charge for mileage, and of course you I you were going there anyway. I was going there yeah. anyway. You know, I had a, a they, I didn't have to take vacation time either mm -hmm. to to visit these libraries. So um, the same thing with the Kansas libraries. I was um, on a holiday and I stopped on the way back, and they had to spend uh, one night in a hotel that they paid for. Um, but it was um, Winfield was a refurbishment. Mulvane is one is the one that I look at. Same service population. Oh, perfect. Brand new library. Mm -hmm. Two years old, three years old now, mm -hmm. and is a suburb of Wichita, mm -hmm. and we're kind of a suburb of Lincoln. Yeah, so close enough. Very yeah. similar, and um, I have gone back and contacted the director there at Mulvane numerous times. She actually just sent me a document yesterday um, because I'm trying to increase my FTE mm -hmm. and getting some resistance. So mm -hmm. um, she's helped me give me some ammunition on that. So. Um, in total, I visited 25 libraries, 14 in Nebraska, and 11 outside. So next I'd like to discuss some helpful hints um, when visiting a library. And I'll just jump in. If anybody has any questions or comments or anything, don't forget, type into your questions section of your GoToWebinar, and I'll grab that, and um, Joy will answer as you're asking. Yeah. So the first helpful hint is to contact the library to determine who is the best person to give you a tour. And I know that sounds like very obvious, but in some cases it's not the director because there was a few cases where mm. the director wasn't there mm. when it was being built. So it could be that I ended up talking to the assistant director or somebody who was there 
who could answer the questions. Because mm -hmm. to go to a library and ha give a tour, you know, what was your decision in, in making, you know, what was behind your decision in, in doing this? Yeah. And they would say, I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't around. here yet. Yeah. You know? So I know that this is something that you need to do. somebody who was there at the time. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing is don't waste their time asking silly questions that you could find out on your own before you go. So there's going to be newspaper stories, there's going to be reports, there's going to be things that you can find out there. Right. Yeah. It, and, but I have to say, I was shocked that there was a fair number of libraries that were in the midst of a building project that really had nothing on their website, wow. which I found, so in some cases, that was difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it was built three years ago, it's you're mm -hmm. not going to have it. It would just be if a it was done, you're not going to have it anymore, right, right? Right. So, but learn as much as you can about the old building and the new building. I did notice that on the Crete Public Library's website, you guys have got tons of information. Yes, because you're right in the middle of the project, yes. and it says here's what's going to look like, here's where we're at, here's pictures, here's how we came up with everything, all of this. Right, yeah. and I also have a monthly blog in a way. It's just a couple of sentences that says. So I have a monthly meeting with the architects mm -hmm. and the um, contractors mm -hmm. on site. And so I can say, okay, next week they're putting in the glass, exactly. and then they're doing this and this and this. So, um, yes, and I think I'm a little bit anal about it because I was kind of disappointed in some of the libraries not having much a history all. of what happened. Yeah, and that's what I'm thinking, that this could then be turned into, for, for after yours is done, mm. historical purposes. Mm -hmm. Here's a record of everything for, and now I'm sure from what you've learned in your experience in trying to research this, you want to help future libraries. Sure, so absolutely. Yours is going to be out there somewhere documented of here's everything went through. And by the way, call me. <laughs> no, well, yeah, call me because but, I have, yeah. like I said at the beginning, I am so grateful for all those librarians who, who gave me their time and oh, continue to give me their time. Um, so fresh up on the library itself, what's the service population? What programs are they offering? These types of things. So you get a feel. So again, you come in asking relevant questions. Um, write up the questions ahead of time. Uh, so you don't forget what, to, what you want to And ask. take lots of photos. Mm -hmm. And if you can, while you're writing the answers to the questions, you take a photo, jot down, this is a photo of this. Because mm -hmm. in some cases, I might be visiting two libraries in a day. Um, and you got to try to remember, you know, what was what. And, of course, it's in chronological order, but, you know, you don't want to go back and say, well, now, why did I take that photo? What was it relevant? <laughs> yeah. um, so, and the last question I always asked was this. Oh. And I learned so much when asking that question. It could be as simple as count the number of outlets you need and double it. Oh. Because we did not put that. Mm -hmm. um, where's the air conditioner or the heat? Um, is it when you open the door, is it, is it hidden? You know, I mean, all sorts of just really nitty gritty specific things. But I learned a lot um, by asking that question. And as you leave, make sure you ask, you know, hopefully you've had a very pleasant experience and they have too. Do you mind if I follow up with, with additional questions? And I have done that for a lot of these um, librarians. Most recently, in addition to the FTE question, was I was asking questions about soft launches versus grand openings and what did they do. So these are yeah. questions I didn't think about asking when I went to visit. Not when, them you're, when you're first starting. You're, yeah. not, you're not at that stage yet. <laughs> so I developed a rapport with a number of um, libraries, and I'm uh, very grateful for that. Um, here, <laughs> borrowed. Yes. Here are some ideas that I have learned, and I actually have incorporated them into the new library in Crete. Um, Two-sided fireplace um, in I Batavia. Saw that, that was something that people wanted. It was a fireplace. Yes. <laughs> and this was in Batavia, Illinois, and it just looks so Pretty. warm and 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 seating area on either side. Ours is not wood; mm -hmm. it's stone. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the same concept where we have two seating areas on either side. It's in what we call, I call the adult reading room. So it's going to be kind of like the only area in the library that's going to be kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. And on one, on, we've got the two seating areas and then behind them we have our Nebraska historical classic collection. And then on the other side we'll have the periodicals. Because mm -hmm. that was another thing you learned is you want to put the periodicals right next to the seating area. Yeah, because people want to come in and just browse and read, yeah. 
So Is that a gas fireplace, I assume. Yes. Or, yeah. yeah. Technology no and chopping wood on the on no. duties as a sign. <laughs> <laughs> I think insurance would be a little tough on that one. So um, this was, I found this out, certainly in Blair was the first one, the technology end caps. Nice. So when we did our library design, we had to know exactly where the stacks were going to go and at what ends of what end caps we were going to have the technology end caps. So when, before they laid the concrete, they had to put the power in the data. Mm -hmm. So we have six technology end caps, and that's going to be the card catalogs on the, on the tablets. Nice. Um, I know this seems kind of silly in a way, but you need to have adult size seating mm -hmm. in the children's area. The parents too. or caregivers are going to be there. Yeah, the or they're kids. waiting yeah. for the story time or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, an ice making machine in the catering kitchen. Mm -hmm. We will have a catering kitchen uh, next to the in adjacent yeah, to the community, community room. room. Yeah. yeah, and it has to be ADA compliant, which there's only like about two models in the world I found out that are ADA compliant for ice making machines. But um, on the floor browsing bins. For the board books, so the kids can just little kids can just okay. rifle through it. Um, cozy spaces. This was in Wichita, and I couldn't believe it when I saw it because we actually have we only have one. It's kind of an interesting shape, but we had built that into ours as well. So obviously Wichita was a much bigger um, library, and they had like four, mm -hmm. five, six of these, which is really great. You can just curl up with yeah. a book. Um, a sink in the children's program room. Oh, they make a mess. Yeah. yeah. So um, you clean up the paint and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, a child-sized toilet. Um, we we do have a family restroom in in our library. It goes basically from the youngest to the oldest. Mm -hmm. So in the youngest part of it, we have a family restroom, mm -hmm. and we have two sized toilets. We have a little one and a big mm -hmm. one. Um, and that's right next to the family room, which is where you can take a screaming toddler or <laughs> nurse or whatever. Right. Teen rooms. Um, there are actually new libraries out there that refuse to put in a teen room because they were worried okay. what the teens would do. So in our library, we do have a separate teen room. Um, but it is for monitoring it. Glass. I can see that is the ah, there it's go. glass on two sides and mm -hmm. it's visible from the circ desk. Mm -hmm. Another decision that I made, um, you see in the middle down there, um, that's actually San Francisco, and um, San Francisco had a huge teen area and they had their teen collection in there. And I made a decision not to have the teen collection in a separate room. Because so many adults like to read YA books. Oh, absolutely, I do. <laughs> so yes. it's right outside. It's it's in. It's not actually in our team mm -hmm. room. It's just right outside of it. So, um, but diner style. Um, I like booths. That. Yeah, we're booth very popular, that, yeah. and we have kind of a booth-ish kind of thing. Um, but in order to make it ADA compliant, ours looks a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, those exact same chairs on the top right, where I saw in Winfield. Um, we got the exact same ones because we've learned that teens like to move things around. So you need furniture I want to that is movable. My friends, yeah. So we have the exact same furniture, those chairs, and they're actually on casters, so you can oh. sit on them and they stop. But then when you get off, you can just pull them and move oh, them. Nice. So a washer and dryer. Oh, wouldn't have thought about that. Yep, and we put that of course in the uh, staff room, which we're finally going to have our own staff room. <laughs> Um, these funky study tables, um, this was yeah. in San Francisco. They're quite expensive, but we got one. Mm -hmm. um, future use. So RFID, yeah. the biggest stress I had with the design was regret. Am, what am I going to regret? What are you going to forget? Yeah. What am I going to forget? In particular, forget something that's structural. Mm -hmm. So... I can't afford to put in an RFID system. Mm -hmm. it's min the minimum is 30000 for a library my size. But under, like I talked about when they put the data in the electrical before they pour the flooring, mm -hmm. I do have RFID built in, mm -hmm. in, in similar situation to this as well as another door. And you won't be able to see it. There'll be, mm -hmm. you know, little there, there'll be a little cap that yeah. the carpet will cover. But in the future, if you we ever want to do get it. a grant and decide you want to install it, you've got the prep work done. Got the prep That's work done. Yeah, because to go back and install this later 
would be hugely yeah, expensive. Yeah, to dig up the floor if you right. have to, yeah. So, and then we also use these wall strips so it can go up and down with um, art, um, art displays. Mm -hmm. um, and then some other examples of what we actually have mm -hmm. taken from, and um, this is in Blair. This is their donor, their large donor wall. And I, I liked it because, personally, I don't like donor walls that have dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. I find that to be kind of tacky, um, yeah. personally. So it should be just you gave something. You gave something you and you should see you by the size. Yeah. See the size, see Cargill, uh -huh. see how big that is. Uh -huh. So that's how it determines that you have more or less. Right. But not so a specific this is, amount. Yeah. This is what it translates to us. So mm -hmm. you can see the bigger one, mm -hmm. um, the the Keywit and the the Sherwood Foundation. Mm -hmm. Those those two bigger ones, they gave us uh, half a million. Like word cloud, but for money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the smallest ones are five thousand. So this goes from five thousand to half a million. And then you can see where it says future growth. Mm -hmm. So knock on wood. Hopefully we yeah. will continue More to raise money. You can fill in there with others. Yeah. Um, this I totally stole right away from Ashlyn, and this is for the small donors. Oh yeah, the books. They look like books. Those are really. And when I started looking, talking yeah. to people about visiting. And people would say, you've got to go to Ashland and visit the, 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 the shelf or books. Or, <laughs> and I'm like, what? I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> and right away you can see this. So this is what it translates to us. Mm -hmm. So it's um, 250 500 and a thousand dollar donations. And this, that donor wall would be closer to the library side and the large donor wall will be closer to the community mm -hmm. side. Um, so that's things that I thought were brilliant and, um, you know, I didn't want to go with the bricks and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So I like the library themes here too, especially yeah. specific to the library. Well, and I don't know, I mean, Ashlyn, unfortunately, she was one of those that wasn't around when it was being built. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how they came up with that, but it was brilliant and I stole it. <laughs> um, lastly, I like to end with fundraising. Um, Again, like I said before, um, one of the first libraries I went to visit, not only was a design part of it, but it was also, who did you ask for? Mm -hmm. And this is something that's very regional because the $2 million we got um, are all from Nebraska-based foundations. So it's very specific. Yeah, definitely look locally. We have so many think, organizations that are specific to your state, your Nebraska, your community found. We have a Nebraska Community Foundation that has lots of um, grants. Such as, um, Nebraska Department of Economic Development. Oh, let's talk about so, that. Yeah. So yes. So um, well, I also talked to these librarians about best practices for reaching out um, to the business community as well as individuals, and they had all sorts of different ideas. Hmm. But one thing that I was very interested in is in the naming rights. So I would mm -hmm. take a photo of a study room, and I would say, okay, they asked $50,000 for this, or they asked $5,000 for this. So then with my fundraising committee, I could go back and say, okay, this is what these people are doing, and then we would look at their income level, mm -hmm. because Crete is below average for Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So if um, Blair, which and Ashlyn, which has much higher income level, we could say, mm, no, we, you know, we don't think we could get work for us. It doesn't work yeah. for us. And so, but that was that was a real good thing um, to ask them about. Um, I had mentioned before about a fundraising committee, marketing, marketing, marketing. I know I'm a marketer initially, um, but every yeah, step of the way, right. I would get um, articles in the newspaper. Um, in the existing library, we would print out um, checks, oh, three sure. feet by one and a half feet, and it would have the name of the donor, and they're all along the wall. Mm -hmm. So you can walk into the library and you can see who's donated. And then we'd have a check passing ceremony mm -hmm. with the photograph, mm -hmm. and it would make it into the sure. newspaper. So um, constantly marketing yourself throughout the whole um, project is, is very important. You can get other people to want to be that in that to do that as well. I want to be handing a big check to the library. I want that kind of promotion for me or my organization or my business. <laughs> Most people did. We did get one anonymous 88000 from an individual. Um, but yes, most of them were, were quite happy with, with, the, with the publicity. Um, 
we also hired a consultant from a group called Library Strategies. Hmm. They're based out of St. Paul. Um, and they do advising for only libraries, hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And I heard the head of it, who used to be the head of the Friends Group for St. Paul, and oh. he started this consultancy. Ah. And the very first summer I was working here, I uh, did go to the ALA because I had purchased a student ticket already <laughs> so before I got hired. <laughs> and I went to a free conference and was absolutely blown away by them, and I thought, I want to hire them. Hmm. So for $2,500, yeah. she okay. came and had a half-day mm -hmm. seminar with my fundraising group to kind of kick us off. And it, I think it was money well spent. Mm -hmm. um, with that, you see I have the CDAA, the Community uh, Development Assistance Act, which is Nebraska-based, and it is wonderful. Yes. So basically you get a grant, and we asked for $25,000, and now we've gotten it again, mm -hmm. second year. So what it is, is is it's a tax break. Okay, so let's say somebody gives us $10,000, okay? Mm -hmm. They get the federal tax relief through the 401C, um, who is the friends group, and then my, my fundraising group decided on $10,000 or more, you get a 20% tax break. So that means instead of giving 10,000, you are net net giving us 8,000 because you can deduct $2,000 off your Nebraska state tax. tax liability. And you can decide what you want to do, okay? You can go up to 40%. Now, there's another small town who got it and they gave everybody 40%. Mm. Ashland had a much higher bar and we decided on 10,000 and above, you got 20%. Five to ten, five to nine, 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 nine. You got ten percent. So Windstream gave us uh, fifty thousand nice. dollars for the technology room, for the naming right. Right, of course. Right, yep. but the net net is only forty thousand because they can take ten thousand off the. Mm -hmm. So you, for those of you in Nebraska, I highly, highly encourage you to do this. Um, they've been a really lovely organization, even though it is a government organization <laughs> to work for, and there may very well be something similar in other states as yeah. well. So that's pretty mm -hmm. much all I have to say. All right. Um, yeah, and, and some of these other think group organizations, yeah, for, for looking for um, funding. Um, in general. Definitely good. Yeah, Foundation Center is one that we recommend to libraries for all sorts of things, yeah. Um, all right. So, um, anybody have any questions? Type them into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Nobody's typed anything while you were type while you were talking, but if you do want to ask anything, um, get it in there, uh, and we will um, ask it of Joy before. Um, and my email before. address is there. Yeah, as well. and of course you can reach out to her at any time. Yeah, um, no, this is great. This is exactly you know perfect information. I think that people need. A lot of people see you know we do presentations on here's a new library and everything cool in it and what we did, but I think the the before, <laughs> of, the groundwork. Well, how did you get to the new library, is something that I haven't really um, seen a lot of, you know, presentations or information about. I mean, so this is well, and I think I'll be very honest with you. In our case, it. yeah, we, there is a particular architecture company in Nebraska that is mm -hmm. known for building libraries. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and if you do get an architectural firm that has a lot of experience in building libraries you may not necessarily have to go through all of this. I'm sure they have the experience. That organization yeah. did not submit a proposal, and I talked to the organization later, mm -hmm. and a lot of things, they just slipped through. They didn't, yeah. They didn't realize they were looking for something. Oh, no, they did. Ah, okay. But they didn't know it was happening right then. Ah. Um, so therefore, mm -hmm. our architects mm -hmm. really didn't have a lot of experience. They have experience mm -hmm. building um, schools, which mm -hmm. have a library. Mm -hmm. But um, because of that, I, I had, I really was much more hands-on mm -hmm. as far as the design goes. They don't have their own experience yet. Well, they, they have a, an interior decorator who came back later and moved back to Omaha, and she's been absolutely brilliant. Oh wow! Because she did the Cedar Rapids, and she did mm -hmm. some. She lived in. She moved to Des Moines for a while, mm. and then when she came back, I was so grateful. But she missed that whole design phase. But ah, she's been there yeah. for the furniture and whatnot. No. And yeah. um, but the other guys really didn't. So mm. 
I cannot tell you how many times I would say, no, this has to go here. I was in this place. I was in that place. I was. Mm -hmm. This is what is common in libraries. Right. I mean, they even had the audacity to say, well, nobody comes into a public library to use the bathrooms. And what? we all just, right. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was very insistent mm -hmm. on not only having the, the family toilet, but on the adult side to have an ADA mm -hmm. um, unisex toilet. Yeah. And they couldn't understand why I was so, because the other restrooms are way up, you know, by the community room. Mm -hmm. And so people just using that, yeah. And so they just thought, well, nobody comes to the library to use the bathroom. And I thought, oh my God. You have no idea what, like, you need to train, you need some uh, instruction on what libraries do now. Yeah. <laughs> people are there for hours. But they came hours around, and programs you know, and, yeah. They came around, but because, I, I think because of that, I, I really had to be, and, and because of the research I did, I could stand up and say, look at this photo, look at this photo, mm -hmm. this library, this library, this library, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. This is what libraries do. You had to advocate for your library and educate your... But I had that, yeah. I had that backing yeah. because I had physically gone to see these libraries. Right. I think that makes a huge difference, yeah, yeah. being able to see what's been in other libraries. Yeah. yeah. Gave me some street cred, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as it were. Yeah, and you talked earlier about the, the public library survey where we asked the questions mm -hmm. about what libraries are doing. We actually do have also on our Nebraska Library Commission website, we have a page of buildings that are in construction. Mm -hmm. So we take the information from those surveys and we have a constantly updated um, website of where um, different libraries in Nebraska are at in their process. So um, yeah, and other states need to yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they have the quite well, like you said, if they're asking the question. Well, yeah. I mean, because I had to call I mean, Iowa and right. Say, oh, I mean, we pull it from the the, the survey we already do. Um, so if anybody in Nebraska or anywhere is looking to see, um, if you go to our and I'll show you when we get over to the website. Yeah, um, we we try and put that out there as well, so you don't have to dig through the survey. The surveys are out there too. Of, you know, this huge spreadsheet huge of every spreadsheet. single question, um, which can be very useful for all sorts of reasons, but um, that we do pull out as a special website. Um, I think for some of us here at the staff wanting to know, you know, who should I be talking to to help them out with anything? Does anybody need some assistance? Why did this library call me with this weird question about ADA toilets? You know, <laughs> oh, it's because they're doing a new building sure. right. Right. or a renovation or whatever, yeah. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has any urgent questions right now. I guess that's okay. Um, you either answered every single thing they wanted to know, <laughs> or their heads are spinning. Yeah, their heads to yeah, like maybe. sit back and think about it for a while, and that's perfect. <laughs> um, reach out to, to Joy at any time when you do have a question or anything you want to ask her. So um, I think we're going to well, pop off of the presentation now to our website so I can show you. And I should have it open. There we go. This is the Nebraska Library Commission webpage, nlc.nebraska.gov. Um, and if you go to the search, and I'll show you this building thing, I think we just searched like buildings uh, is where we have um, building activity. That's what we call it, Nebraska Library's building activity. And you can see here, this is very much based on what you were talking about. Um, it's, um, planning underway, is fundraising underway, is the building underway, and when do you uh, anticipate uh, completing it? And there's you guys. Uh, yes, 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 2019. Eh, 2020 now you're saying. Oh, it always has been. Okay. But um, I mean, not sure where. The well, no, 2019. Is. We're going to move between Christmas and New Year. Okay, so. So it will be completed in 19. We're going to move that, in January. Okay. Uh, we're going to open, open. open January 2nd. Right, so it will be completed by the end of 2019. So that's yes. Great. Yeah. Yes. Um, so you can see where some of them are just in the very beginning planning stages here in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. where they're just trying to think about it and where, all, where they're at um, and what we know. And some of this does come from the survey, but some of it, um, let's see here. <laughs> And you know, uh, we don't know. Um, we don't have all the answers. Uh, these aren't required questions if they don't know if they're just in the in Oh, yeah. So Nebraska stages. City just did a renovation. Right. And that's the thing, too, is it, and then this here just so you can't specify tell. Yeah. on this particular, um, what we put up here, it, it, we, don't specify, we don't differentiate between is it a full brand new building right. or just renovation or update. Right. Um, but just is there any sort of activity going on? Um, but if you do look at the full survey, then you'll be able to see what they were talking about. Is it a complete replacement or a brand right. new building or just an update or right. expansion or something? Yeah. So, and I'm sure any of these will be willing to talk to you um, about what they are um, doing. So this is just things currently in process. Like you said, things that are completed already they fall off of this list for us right. because this is just for fact that these work not to yeah. do. Yeah. Because you did have on your list that you went to um, Lincoln City Libraries 
um, because they did build um, oh, I went to some, Walt. right a couple of new um, buildings mm -hmm. in the in the city. I don't even know how long ago that was. Sometime within Walt and Isley, I think, or so. Yep. Yeah. Um, so they did have new branch libraries built. Right. What they're on here for right now is they're in the planning for doing something to be determined yet for the main, with their main library yeah. downtown. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah. Hopefully it'll work. All right, so that's where that is on our website. Um, but so, show them where the survey is too. Oh yeah, the survey. <laughs> um, it's not a bad idea. Let's see. This is always difficult. Oops. Wrong keyboard. <laughs> oh my god. Survey public libraries. Um, so let's see here. Um, the Bistat Collect is what we use to do the survey. Um, so this is the for logging in to uh, answer the questions. Uh, this survey is this is a national thing. Like I said, it goes live like in November. But I think we go to Library Data Services. This is where you can see the most recent survey data. And we have our 2017, 18 is most recent stuff that's compiled and out there. And there's an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, some things more uh, highlights are here. Um, I'll just open it up. I'm not going to show you everything, but um, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. So it's got everything here and uh, questions and questions and questions. So everything on here. So you can just search for whatever you want to know about all our different libraries that, submit, that submitted the public library survey in the state. Yeah, and then you can just, you know, highlight it and then mm -hmm. sort by that particular column right. that says, you know, when 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 was your library built? Mm -hmm. Existing library built, and then you can get your current library built. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So you know, you don't want yeah. those like mine. And like then two. here's date of latest edition renovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's very helpful. Yeah. Um, we do also have. Um, I'm here with the active funders and campaign for new mm -hmm. renovated buildings. Instruction. So this is where all that information comes from. Right. Um, you can also get um, historical data going back all the way to um, I think the beginning. We started with 1998. So if you do know, like we said, the Lincoln City Libraries were built in a previous date, or if you don't know historical information about any of the public library surveys, they are all up here as well for all the previous years. So if you're interested in something older for whatever reason, you know something was going on in a certain time frame. Whatever. <laughs> what not to do? It's there. Yeah, yeah. It's they're all up there. Yeah. yeah, and these change over the years too. Each year, sometimes different questions are added or deleted or changed. So um, the questions that were asked in the most recent one might not be the same that were asked in the previous one. So keep that in mind if you are looking through this for anything. Yeah. So good research. We, we have a lot of good information we put out there. We try to keep anything we collect. We try to put out there as much as possible for life to help libraries. Mm -hmm. But other states, as you found out. You never know. Yeah. But call whoever is your library commission or your state library. They may be the people keeping this kit, gathering this information somewhere that you just don't know about, and they can possibly get, possibly get you some of this more broader information rather than trying to call randomly each library themselves <laughs> and and see if they what there's what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Look yeah. to them for some help. Absolutely. All right. So. Um, that will, I think, wrap it up for today's show. Nobody typed any other questions than when we were talking, so that's fine. Um, I'm going to go to our Encompass Live website, and uh, you see I popped up here, actually, into uh, my general search, not on our Library Commission website, because so far you can use the search engine, your search engine of choice. Um, so far, Encompass Live is the only thing called that on the Internet, hmm. so nobody else can use the same. <laughs> and it will bring you up to our main page for the show. Um, you see here's today's show and our upcoming um, shows that we'll talk about in a sec here. But our archive is here. Right underneath is a link to our archives. Um, today's show is being recorded. It should be up and posted. Uh, I would, I do this um, by the end of the day today, if everything works correctly. If go to webinar and YouTube and everything cooperates, um, it'll be the top one on the list here. You see our most recent ones at the top here. Um, we'll have a link to the recording like this one and this one had a handout and a link to the slides. Um, that Joy did as well. I have a copy of those that I'll link to. Uh, when it is ready to go, I will email everyone who uh, attended today and everyone who registered for today's show to let you know that it's available. Mm -hmm. um, and we also push that onto our social media and whatnot too. Um, and I'll show you here, while we are here on our archives, as I said, we, we, we archive all of our shows. Uh, this year, um, 
2019 is actually the 11th year of Encompass Live. It's been around for a long time. And this is our full archive going all the way back to the very first show in January 2009. Wow. So keep that in mind when you are watching an our, a show on here. Everything has a date of when it was originally broadcast. Uh, some things on here may be old, dated, outdated information, just dated information. Links might not work. Projects or services might no longer exist or have changed completely since we did a show. Um, but we are librarians. Is what we do. We archive things. And if we can keep them all out there for you, we will. And we will always have these um, out here going all the way back to 2009. So just pay attention if you are watching in our shows to when the original date was um, to see if it's something um, you know, just so you know what we're talking about. You can search this for the entire archives or the most recent year's worth, um, 12 months, if you want to make sure you're just getting something um, current. Okay. Yeah. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. So if you're a big Facebook user, we have a Facebook page where we post here's a reminder to log in today's show, um, when other shows are available. No, I don't want to log in now. Thank you, Facebook. Um, reminding people of when recordings are available from previous shows. So um, if you do like to use Facebook, uh, give us a like over there and you can keep track of what we're doing there. Um, we also use, if you saw on the intro slides, we have a hashtag we created for the show for when we share anywhere else, like on uh, Twitter and Instagram and whatever, NCUMP Live. We kind of abbreviated a little. So search for that if you want to find us elsewhere. So that will be um, wrapped up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week and for any of our other shows. But next week's topic is about eliminating late fines. This is a huge thing happening in libraries lately. Um, actually, it's been happening for years if you, you know, looked into it. But it's become just really more a big topic mm -hmm. of libraries are just getting rid of late fines, no longer mm -hmm. late fees for anything. And so we're going to be talking about that last week and next, next week. <laughs> and Joy actually mentioned they did that for children. We, uh, young, uh, young adults young adult. and younger print mm -hmm. only we have eliminated fines um, just before Christmas. Right. Yeah. So it's a popular thing. Um, Beth Christ, who's from the Colorado State Library, and um, Meg DeFries, who's a consultant out of California, are going to be with us remotely. They're not traveling here to Nebraska um, uh, to talk about how um, what's going on with that and how you can do that to um, benefit your library. So um, and have a good thing in your community. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Libraries are getting huge huge press and huge positive reactions mm -hmm. to this. So mm -hmm. uh, please do sign up for next week's show and any of our other shows we have coming up here. We've got all our September shows books. I'm starting to get October up there as well. Um, so keep an eye on our schedule. Other than that, thank you everyone for attending. Thank, thank you, you for popping over thank here you. this morning. Thank you for inviting me. Us in the rain. <laughs> um, and hopefully we'll see you another time in Encompass Live. Bye.